Here we have an Ike uh, SSL O. Uh, there are other uh, models that are just like this, uh, the SSL OL, and even the uh, Ike SLs that have uh, problems with the focus knob. And uh, on this particular model, it's simply working, but if you turn a little farther, it's stripped. If you try to go forward and hold it, it's stripped. And basically what happens is, is it loses focus and sooner or later this thing just gives up and there's nothing left. So, <clears throat> we'll show how to replace this. Uh, there's a, uh, a rubber, called a grommet, on the inside of the shaft that moves this uh, lens back and forth. And we'll uh, show you how to replace that with some household uh, tools, well, maybe household, but uh, things you could easily get at a store. <clears throat> so, anyway, to start, we're going to remove the gate. We're going to remove the lens. And always rotate, whenever you're, whenever you're moving a lens, always rotate the knob. Although, in this case, we're going to replace the rubber anyway. But, uh, rotate the, the lens out. And I'm not sure if I can show where the damage is, but I'll try to zoom in on it. Maybe this will work, maybe this won't. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. So basically, your damage is right here. Let me take out my trusty Boy Scout knife. This piece of rubber here is basically shot. And initially, jeez, oh someone has already removed the screws, which is incorrect. I didn't know that, and this is the only machine I have here to show you. So, at this point, uh, this video will not show loosening the screws on the bottom in order to... Uh, no, wait, the screws are still there. Let's see. Ah, they are there. Lucky. Okay, so we're cool. So anyway, this is the piece of rubber that is shot. Uh, it's just soft and goofed up, so uh, we're going to replace it. Now, uh, I'll flip the projector and show where the, how to get it out, get, how to get the shaft out. There are two screws here, which someone has already messed around with, but it still won't come out. They have to be loosened but not taken out because there are some we're going to get back in. Let me find a screwdriver. And once you get them loosened to a point, you can pull on it and see that it's not... So you, you get your screwdriver in here. Make sure you use the right screwdriver because these are easily, easily stripped. And uh, this particular screwdriver is a number one. So anyway... I think I have to loosen these just a little bit more to get the shaft out. Yep, that was it. Now as you can see, there's two little indentations here, and that's where the screws fit in to keep this thing moving back and forth. Okay, if someone has already put some kind of rubber on this, which uh, actually isn't that bad, but um, we're going to take it off and we're going to do a repair as I would. Sometimes this rubber gets this rubber gets just totally decomposed. Sometimes it's gone. Sometimes pieces are stuck in here. Just make sure you get all that stuff out. So anyway, at this point, first step on this one, we're just going to remove the rubber. I don't know if it's glued on. Yep, there it is. See, I think what someone did here on this particular one was they had a piece of rubber but it was too thick. They had a piece of rubber and it was too thick and you could see they were trying to knife it off. So that's, uh, it probably wasn't working correctly, that's why it was all loose and stuff. So anyway, uh, now we have the shaft clean. If there's any gunk on there and stuff, get it off. I just used my trusty little pen knife here, but you might use some alcohol or 
film renewer or something to remove any stickiness. This doesn't have any. Okay, so we got this. That's ready for replacement. Now I'm going to move the projector and we'll work on the table. Let me back this thing up for you. Okay, so back we're, here we are. So at this point, there's a couple of things that you need. What I use is silicone airline tubing. And I like the silicone because it stretches. And this is simply aquarium tubing. That particular stuff here doesn't really... 25 foot of it, uh, drip systems, unfortunately it doesn't show the thickness, but you'll have to eyeball it when you get over there, you take a shaft along. Okay, so basically what it's going to do, and uh, let me move that closer. What we're going to do is we're going to redo this shaft with this tubing. Now the problem is, is we can get the tubing on there. And it looks real nice, but it's not the proper diameter. In other words, this particular tubing is um, uh, too thin. Guys have said they've been able to find tubing that fits exactly. I have not, so this is what we do. So anyway, this is too, too thin. It's supposed to be the exact diameter of the shaft. And if, if you look closely you can see it's smaller than the shaft. So we want to build up the shaft in order to make the outside diameter or circumference match the shaft. That's the key. It's a trial and error procedure because we're going to build this up with tape. Now the tape that I use is household PVC tape. I'm, I'm imagining some other tape might work but this particular tape works for me and uh, it's pretty wide, only because I have a lot of it, we use it for packing. So I'm going to uh, clean off an end here. <clears throat> I'm going to start winding it on here. Now I've done this several times, and I sort of know how much to wind on here. If you notice, I'm going right up to the edge. I'm pressing it on good at the beginning because it does have a tendency to slip on the shaft and then I rotate the tape as it goes on there. As you can see it's rotating on here and I'm putting it on as tight as I can because if you leave any airspace it's going to slip. So. I don't know if I'll leave this in real time, but I'm going to start winding. Okay. Don't worry about the end here. All that stuff gets cut off. And I'm making sure that I keep this area butt it up against here. I want to make a smooth wind. Yep, I'm off. See? So I'm going to back it off. Make sure your wind comes all the way to that back metal portion. Usually not doing this in front of a camera, so my angles are a little off here. Now I have a buildup, and I'm thinking about the thickness of the of the tubing, but I'm going to put a little bit more here. Sometimes you'll put too much and then you can't get the shaft in there. So it's sort of like a, if you put too little, then it doesn't come up far enough into the lens cavity and then it doesn't catch the, the lens. So I'm going to 
already getting off here a bit. I think, I think I'm going to give it some more. This stuff you can almost stretch as you're putting it on, which is sort of neat because then it's nice and tight on there. I mean, this PVC tape. Now I'm getting it better. Okay, I think I got too much on there to be quite honest, but I'm going to, we can always redo it, uh, take some off. So you break the tape. Okay, so now, as you can see, the shaft is built up. Hopefully the thickness of this material will just make the rubber part exactly this size. So at this point, usually I find the end of the shaft and I cut it off. I use a pen knife that works just fine. I'm going to cut this. Uh, let me see where the end of that shaft is. It's clear, which is nice. So the end of the shaft is right about there. Let me do it on a table here. Okay, cut the end off. I'm going to cut a little more to the end of the shaft. So a little bit of the shaft is showing. Okay. Now I'm going to see if I can stretch this over because I have a start. Yep. That was the key. Okay, so again, stretching it over the end, leave a little of the shaft because we have to stretch this stuff over the end. Okay, so now just by pressing and sort of kneading and moving, you can pressure it on here. Okay, so now we have that tubing on there. It looks a little bigger than the end shaft, but it still may work, so let's give it a shot. First thing I'm going to do is clip off the end. And uh, I'm going to do a test, test experiment here. I want to get it right up to the end here. I'm going to do a test experiment, see if it'll go in or if it's too thick. This is a little tight, but see it did fit. And uh, rotating it and make sure I don't pull it off. Now we have a, it's going to be in about in this position. We have a nice bump there. That bump's important because you want to make sure that uh, it, uh, it grabs the lens. Let's see. Don't worry, I'm looking for the zoom. Okay. So this is the part that's going to grab the lens. And of course... When the lens goes in, it's going to grab these little pieces. So anyway, let me get back to this nut and bolt here. <clears throat> the little screws around. Now what someone had done is they already loosened these screws. What you're going to have to do when you're installing is 
of course loosen these screws to pull the shaft out. Now we're going to find the tighten slightly. Well, I sort of sort of forgot a step, but that's because I was showing you it fits. If we look right down here, now we have tubing that's too far too far on the shaft. There is a space where this piece of call it L-shaped material goes up and holds the shaft. So we're going to have to trim this. And usually it's Okay, so I pull this back. Usually I don't insert it until it's ready. So anyway, back back to where it was, okay? Now, uh, we're going to trim it, and we're going to trim off enough where it, the, the shaft is going to touch that little L-shaped piece. Now I'll have to do it on, on my table here, so. Okay. So I know the shaft's right about here. I'm going to knock off, I guess, about an eighth of an inch. If you don't do enough, you could do a little more. And you just cut up to the shaft. I'm sorry, I'm not in the, there we go. You just rotate and you keep cutting with your knife until you get the shaft off. And you can have, there you have your end, which the L shape, or the L shape is going to fit. Alright? So, let's get that back now. So now, and again, usually I, I trim this all before I put it in there. Yanking it in and out isn't a good idea, so, you know, at this point, uh, Maybe in there. Now if we take a look here, that shaft, if it goes up, is going to is going to notch into the end of the of the shaft. So we're going to start tightening these to get them into the grooves that I had shown you. There's the groove. So you can see it's shaking. I got enough of the material missing, I see, which is good at the end of the shaft. So you start to tighten these up. Sometimes I remove this knob to do this. I want to clarify what knob I was talking about to be removed when uh, working on these little screws here. I was talking about the main control knob here, the black knob. Uh, as you can see, it's an angular uh, path to the screws, which I have a little trouble even catching here. And then basically it's easy to um, uh, either round out the inside of the Phillips screw uh, only because you're you're catching it at an angle, and sometimes these things are pretty stuck in there uh, when you're uh, doing the uh, first removal. So, anyway, this black knob, uh, it's recommended to remove it if uh, you're having trouble with those screws, or just remove it as a matter of course. Uh, but uh, to remove this knob, there's a little tip involved, and that's um, you have to rotate it because there's a there's a Phillips head screw inside underneath here and when you rotate it this way there's access to the screw through this hole so uh, at this point then uh, look inside there grab a Phillips screwdriver and unscrew the knob a little bit I mean the screw a little bit and pull up on the knob and it comes off so Anyway, that's uh, the knob I was referring to, and we'll continue with the uh, video. 
taking them out sometimes they're very easy to strip so make sure you use the right screwdriver and remove the knob if you feel that there's any slippage when you're working on it. I can feel this tightening up now because this piece of end part is touching the rubber which is sort of good. Okay, that one's bottomed, in other words, tight. That one's bottomed, so tight. Okay, now, let's see, we can, there we are. Now, when we, remo when we turn this, this, of course, should be turning. Make sure it's not binding, not too tight, whatever, so. Sometimes I discover moving it back and forth, sort of working it in. Sometimes it'll either, these are sharp edges, it'll even trim off a little bit. But right now, this turning is doing okay. There, see, it's trimming some stuff off there, see? I feel a little okay. So we know it's moving. We take our lens, and whenever you're inserting this, even with a brand new, oops, see, this is some of the junk that was on there. Wait a minute. Pieces of the old rubber, which. Uh, Sometimes you could clean off, sometimes you don't. Just move it to another location so it's not at the bottom. Anyway. I like, I always like to press in the lens as I rotate. This way you're, you're basically not um, stripping it or over the, the edge where there's no little teeth. But here's a repair now that will last you a real long time. And basically, we'll be back to normal uh, operation for you. Hmm, okay, we'll get that. Yep, that's the way it should be. So. It's uh, a little bit of a trial and error situation, as you probably saw with me fumbling a bit with the uh, tape, but uh, uh, overall it's, uh, these work fine. We've done them for customers uh, sending in units for refurb and um, uh, uh, never hear from them again, which is, means that they're working. So uh, at this point, um, uh, that's about it on this Ike. Um, uh, remember that all you're going to need is some PVC tape and at your friendly pet store some silicone tubing. Take care.